Hi everyone, welcome along. Today I'm going to show you how to renew a central heating radiator. This particular one's in the bathroom and it's got a rust hole in it. Have a look there, there it is there. It's dripping into this bowl at quite a steady rate. So, we've got a radiator that is the same size, so it should fit straight back on. Possibly may have to renew the brackets, but the width is going to be the same. So, turn the radiator valves off first. This one's just a turn one. You might have a thermostatic one on there. If so, just turn it all the way until it stops and it's off. On this end will be what we call a lock shield valve. And on this one, turn it off, but count the amount of turns that it takes to turn here. And that is the same amount of turns you turn it back on. That's to keep the system balanced so that you don't unbalance the rest of the system. So it's quite a simple pair of pliers. In fact, I'll show you now. This particular radiator has got the boiler right next door, so I dare say it's not turned on all that much because it is right next door. There you are. It's only on half a turn. See that? And that's probably all it needs because the boiler is in the cupboard right next door to this. We don't want it robbing all the other radiators. That upgrade is now isolated. We're going to open the air screw and then we're going to let the air in and undo one of these valves and get the water out of the radiator next. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Do you need to turn the central heating off to do no, this? No, it can stay on, funny enough, because we're isolating this radiator. It's cut off from the rest of the system once we've done that, so we can actually leave the heating running to the other radiators while we do this radiator. So by turning those two valves, you're stopping the that's water it. going into that radiator? That's yep, that's it. Mm -hmm. What I do with these is I always crack a joint first to get the water out of the radiator. Obviously it's got water in there, but it's not been isolated yet. So we undo this valve, put the spanner nice and tight. Now hold against with these, because otherwise it will try to spin the valve right round and break the joint on the back of there. So we use these to hold against it so that we can undo it. And then we just pull it upwards and it should come off. Like that. Very tight as you can see, never easy. Now, it's going to not do too much because it needs air to enter the top of the rad to let the water out. So what we do next is open the air screw valve on the top of the radiator. There's a little bit there, but not as much as when I open this up. So, there's the air key valve on this end. We're just going to open it up, and that will now let the air in. Let it run out. As you can see, there's still a lot of water there because there's still water coming out of the air screw valve. So let's just turn it down, let a little bit come out the bottom first. Now as you can see the water is still coming out of the air screw. Now if it doesn't stop, it does mean that one of your valves that are supposed to isolate the radiator isn't working. And if that's the case, I'm afraid unfortunately you will have to turn the central heating all off and drain it all out, <laughs> at least below the level of this radiator. We're up on the first floor. She wants to drain all of it out, but enough to get this radiator empty. This ain't looking too good at the minute. We'll see if it eases off. If for some reason you do need to drain the system, you're not sure how to do it, uh, I'll give you a link. I've done it already on another radiator I've done, uh, and I'll put that on the screen for you. So, other side, undo that one as well, which I've just done. Okay, so that one's off, they're both off now. Just make sure um, there's a bit of movement to get the rad lifted away. There's a bit in there, you see. So, this is the bit where you're gonna lift it and get it off. Okay, there'll be a little bit of black sludge in there, there always is. So tilt it one end and get it all out. Okay, it's always that bit in here, I'm afraid, horrible. Just be careful of your carpets. We've got lino, so I'm not too worried, but if you are worried, just stick some tissue in that in the ends when you're taking it out. Now, on this side, you can see someone has stuck a ball of fixed valve there. Shouldn't really have them on there, to be honest, but in actual fact, for me, it's rather handy because it gives me the chance to renew this valve with a thermostatic one without having to drain the system off still. So I'm gonna take this valve off and put a thermostatic one on there. Now that I can actually isolate that without drain it off. Um, and what we'll do later on another time is come back and change this bit of pipe work through there and get rid of that because it's not really good. But I haven't got the time for that today. So for today, I'm just gonna put the rad on and come back another time. So, next with the new radiator, decide which end you're going to have the plug in, you know, that end, or whether you're going to have the bleed valve in. But decide which end you want it in, 
And once you've done that, you just literally screw them in the rad and tighten them up. They don't take much. You can push them in finger tight first off and just nip them up with a spanner. Next thing, take the old brackets off. They very rarely fit anyway. They're always slightly different, so get them out of the way. We have this silver foil on this one. <laughs> Try and reflect the heat back about the benefits of that or not. Well, we come to bracket measuring time. And depending whether you want it long ways off the wall, that way, or short ways, is up to you. But I always put the rad on its back, like it is now, and then put the bracket into the slot where it would generally be. And then with your tape, just measure to the bottom of the radio. Now I've already got different ideas on this, but um, this is my old preferred favorite. Um, but as I say, there's lots of different ways you can measure out for your rads. But I just measure that down. It's probably gonna be about three and a half to four inches, I dare say. It looks like three and three quarters. Now, if you look at the valve, the hope and hen that the valve's gonna go on to, I should say, uh, you can see that that, I'll put the tape there, is going to be an inch centre to the bottom. So literally we take the three and three quarters and make it two and three quarters, we know it's gotta be the right height. Next part of the job, get the new radiator. I like to turn it upside down again, um, because this time I'm gonna put the towels in for the valves. Decide which end you're going to have what, if you've got a thermostatic one end, then um, like this I've got a new one. I've made it up with Boss White and M, that's my preferred old fashioned method I know, uh, but uh, you can use PTFE tape of course, and just wind it around the thread. So put your spanner on and just tighten away. Okay, I'm on the camera the other end, a bit more awkward for me. <laughs> Jan's skived off, camera duty, and we do it ourselves. This spanner will be nice and tight and just do her up. I'm going to screw the old towel in the back of the rail in this one. I know it's an old one, but I don't want to take that valve off the lock shield because it doesn't really matter. It works fine. So it's a special key by the way uh, that fits in there. You can see it's hex been shaped in there. Uh, it fits in there. I used that to undo it. I meant to show you getting it out of the old rad, but with this tool it makes it very simple. And then just tighten it up into a new one. So once you're satisfied with the rad brackets being right and secure, these have got, uh, here's a plasterboard ball, but they've got plasterboard fixers on it, so it's good and strong. I had to walk with it, they were slightly different as usual, they never fit the old brackets, but it's probably best to put the new ones on anyway. So if you're happy with it now, you're ready to lift it on. You see the brackets on the back of the radiator here? They've also got a line up and go in those slots here, which is what we're going to do next. So here we go. I like to kind of line it up in the back, get it about right. Over. It looks like we're about there. So uh, you can see I put the head on this, but it's probably best not to put it on until you're finished, really, in case you do any damage. But I've put it on because I went to turn this little valve on here, uh, which meant water came out unless I put the head on and turned it off. <laughs> okay, so anyway, it's popped in. Once the, the rad goes on it, they pop in pretty easy. We've got a bit of leeway, as you can see around the hole where the pipe moves, so plenty of leeway to get it on. And now we've got to do is tighten up. Now, tightening up is not so bad. You don't have to hold too much. Energy. You just hold the body with your right hand. There's no need to go up doing it mad, because uh, it's um, obviously new on this end. Obviously, if you're using an old radiator valve, putting it back, um, you may need to give it a lot more. Go back to the old method of holding against with those footprint tools that I showed you earlier. And that's it now. I've done the other end already. That's just a single nut again, like that. Um, so basically, we're all ready now to turn it on. Well, make sure that uh, it is turned off <laughs> before you go fill it in. Although you will need to open it once it gets going into How it. How you know it's out. turned off? If okay, you just turn it, you'll fill it against here like that. That's on, that way off. Right, and you so turn it off, leave it off and now. fill it. And yeah. Okay, because when I open this up, it will start to fill in. You can hear it going in there. Nothing will happen much until I open this to let the air out, all right? Well, I'm going to open the lock shield end first as well, just to get it, to get the pressure behind it. 
So, as I said earlier, the lock shield end. Now, I've turned it round. This is now the lock shield end, because uh, it doesn't matter too much about the one at this end. It's right against the wall. Um, our thermostatic's the other end, the end that we want to turn. So, I've swapped it round. This is now the lock shield end. And as you remember, when I said to you first off, count the amount of turns that it is on, uh, because that's what you want to set it at when you turn it back on. Now, just so that the rest of the system is balanced up. I know this one was only on half a turn, so we've only got to give it a tiny little bit. That's about it, well, half a turn, and that's all it needs. We're now ready to fill it up. Once we open this valve on the top of the rad here, it should start, the air should start to come out. Uh, and then, all you've got to do then, if you have a combi system, we've got to repressurize because you will have lost pressure, so you will have to push it back to one and a half bar. But if you have um, an FNE type system, that is a little tank in the loft, you won't have to do anything at all. <laughs> It'll fill itself, uh, you haven't got to worry. So. That's the only thing we're going to do now. Let's let the air out and get the pressure checked, and we should be about done. So we're going to fill her up now. Now, you can hear the air coming out of there. Hear it? Okay, that's the rat filling up. Um, now, if you're worried about the combi and filling it up, um, I've got a video on filling the combi up via the filling loop. It's very, very simple. In fact, it's called cool. Jan shows how to fix the combi. Even combi. I can do it. Jan can do it. You can do it. And it's just a matter of filling it up. If you find this towels off, uh, the pressure as it's filling, it's probably because the pressure's dropped off at the combi boiler end and now needs some pressure putting back in. So that's what's happened here now. I can hear it's dropped away. So I'm going to put, oh no, we're there actually. No, no, we're there. But how do you it, know you're there? There's a bit of water there now. Look, can you see that? See that water? All oh, right, right, right. Right, that's full up now, this radiator. So if it does towel off and doesn't fill up, it means your combi boiler needs repressurizing. So just go back to the combi and pressurize it to one and a half bar and open it again. You'll find the pressure's here again. You'll be able to let the air out. Um, it, like this, is only a small radiator, um, so I knew there was enough pressure in there. But I'm going back to check the pressure now and top it up because it will have lost a bit. Um, one other thing people talk to me about is uh, what about the inhibitor? You've drained a bit out, the inhibitor's weaker. now. For a rad of this small size, you haven't really got to worry about topping it up because it's such a tiny amount that's come out, um, it won't have diluted much at all. If it's a big radiator, by that double this size, uh, yes, then I would say you may need to top up with inhibitor as well. Fortunately, I've got a video on how to do that as well. Um, this one that shows you how to use a little tool that fits in here and allows you to fill in the inhibitor very easily okay, into the radiator. Uh, I'll show you that on a link. I'll give you that link for it. <laughs> you can do that one if you want to as well, if you fit in a rad that's bigger than this one. So can you go through this again? Why did you move the lock shield to the other end? Well, the reason I moved it round is there's a little valve on here, a little pet valve. Uh, rather than drain the system, a bit of a cheat really, I, I shut that off, which meant with that end off as well, I could put this thermostatic valve on here without draining it all down. Um, lots of people don't mind these on the heating system, some do, but it's a case of if I get any trouble with it, I'll take it off and renew it, or as I said earlier, probably once renewing through the wall really and doing away with that, it should have one piece of pipe right through. But for now, just to get this done, as uh, this lady and gentleman are going away on holiday, um, I want to get it done very quick for them today and we'll sort that another time. But that meant I was able, as I say, to put the thermostatic rad valve, a new one on here, instead of using the old ones, uh, and just swap what was the lock shield end to that end. And that's how come it's now around this way. And it's easy to see the thermostatic red Yes, you want it this side anyway, because that's against the wall. Yeah. You won't really see it, whereas you can see it there. You can have this up the top facing upwards as well if you want. It doesn't have to face that way. You can undo it and face it so the darling's reading up. Maybe that might be better. So you can have it up that way. Oh. Probably easier. You can have that whichever way you want. So right. we can have it up like that. It's probably easier to see. There you are. And there's the numbers going round. Up six, down to three. Usually about three. There we go. Can tighten this up with just a nip. Doesn't mean much. You get a pair of footprints and just a little squeeze up like that. That's it. That's all it needs. And that's it. Bingo. Rad done. Job sorted. You know what I'm going to say next, don't you? For all our videos, you know where to go. Derek and 33. <laughs> okay. Catch you again another time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.